Well, good morning there. It is Wednesday, and uh, we are nearing the end of, believe it or not, September already. Boy, how quickly this time is going by. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at Joshua 15, verses 13 through 19. Uh, I'm glad that you're joining us in today, and I hope you like the, uh, the beautiful view of the Mackinac Bridge there uh, that connects lower and Upper Michigan, just like that as a backdrop, uh, one of my favorite places to, to be. I've driven over that bridge many, many times, and the uh, scenery there is always breathtaking and spectacular, probably more so than maybe the land that uh, uh, Othniel got, uh, but we'll read more about that here in just a couple of minutes. So, But thank you again for joining me. Really appreciate your being here, and uh, we're going to be using the ESV version for our reading, and I'm going to make the attempt this time. Uh, last time I had Max from Bible Gateway do the reading, uh, but I'm going to I'm going to try this one on my own. So, but again, thank you for joining us. And uh, we're going to open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, allowing us to gather in fellowship. We thank you for the technology that we use today, which allows us to connect uh, one to another, Father, even over great distances. And at different times of the day, as people come to hear your word again, Father, as we look upon the uh, uh, book of, jo of Joshua. We pray, Father, as we look at Caleb's life, uh, as we look at the uh, the lives of those that are impacted today by uh, our reading, that uh, we would also learn how you love us, that you care about us, that you watch over us, and that you are interested in every detail of our lives. May this embolden us to come to you in prayer, and may it also help us to live our lives by faith, trusting that Christ died for us. We humbly pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And again, good morning and welcome. It is good to have you joining me today. And uh, as I say, the beautiful picture of the, of the Mackinac Bridge there. So let's go ahead and take a look at our reading. And again, Joshua 15, verses 13 through 19. Fred, good morning to you there. And Betty Ann, good to see you as well. And thank you for being part of this today. Greatly appreciate it. According to the commandment of the Lord to Joshua, he gave to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, a portion among the people of Judah. Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, Arba was the father of an Anak. And Caleb drove out from there the three sons of Anak, Shishai, Shishai and Ahiman and Talmai, the descendants of Anak. And he went up from there against the inhabitants of Debir. Now the name of Debir formerly was Kiriath Sefer. And Caleb said, whoever strikes Kiriath Sefer and captures it, to him will I give Aksa, my daughter, as wife. And Othniel, the son of Canaz, the brother of Caleb, captured it. And he gave him Aksa, his daughter, as wife. When she came to him, she urged him to ask her father for a field. And she got off her donkey. And Caleb said to her, what do you want? She said to him, give me a blessing, since you have given me the land of the Negev. Give me also springs of water. And he gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. As I was reading through this, uh, just kind of looking for some direction of which way we could take our devotion today. And uh, Karen, thank you for joining us. And Dee, thank you for joining us as well. Uh, glad to have everybody that's here. Uh, some of the things that I looked at uh, as I was going through this was, again, God being faithful to his promises. Uh, faithful to uh, Caleb. Uh, and Caleb had been faithful through, uh, throughout his life. Now, it doesn't mean perfect. But he had remained in a faith relationship with God, and he had served God. And he had been one of the two, uh, along with Joshua, in the earlier account when they were first going into the land some 40-plus years prior. And, you know, they gave the good report. They gave the report that showed that God would be with them. And, of course, we know the outcome of that was that the other 10 spies were believed. And uh, they told lies about how the land was going to be too impossible for the people and that they should just be happy where they were. Um, but again, he wasn't perfect, but he was faithful. And that speaks well to you and to me because we're not perfect, but we can remain faithful. We can remain in that relationship with our God, uh, whatever the ups and downs of life may be, whatever we may go through in our lives, knowing that God loves us and cares for us deeply and dearly uh, can become a very good point for us to hold on to. And whatever's going on in your life today, I encourage you to do that, right? To, to look at God's faithfulness, his track record in your life, in the lives of his people. And we have lots of accounts of that in the scriptures of where God has been with his people all the time. 
And as I look at this, one of the things that really stands out is all the detail that is given to us. And this, these are details that God is watching over. He's interacting in the lives of his people. He's guiding them and directing them. You know, and, and that's something you and I can hold on to. Because sometimes we start to think maybe God's uh, drifted away from us or, you know, he, he cares about us, but he doesn't really care about us, right? That, that idea that, yes, in, in some sense, he, he has some affection towards us. But that, that's not the case at all. The case is he deeply loves us. You know, when God says that he loved the world, I mean, we don't want to take that in from human terms. We want to take that from the terms in which God shares it with us. And he shares that love with us at the cross of Calvary. So my encouragement for you is whatever is going on in your life to hold on to those wonderful promises, right? That God will be with you, that he will bring you through the hardships of this life and he will continue to bless you. That is all part and parcel of his love for you. And then we're going to look at uh, for a minute, uh, Othniel. Um, Caleb laid lay down a challenge that whoever could uh, attack Debir, um, which had already been conquered once before, uh, but through over time, we don't know how much time uh, it slipped out of their hands. Uh, the enemy seems to have snuck in and, and taken over. And boy, can we draw some analogies from that? Those things that maybe God has helped us defeat in our lives before, and then we kind of get lazy and lax and we start to allow certain issues and things to, uh, come into our lives. Uh, you know, I talked last time about those pet sins, right? Where we just kind of accept them and say, well, it's just who I am. It's just part of my makeup, right? Uh, that idea that I've been this way and, and I've been this way for X number of years and boy, I'm just not going to change. We want to be careful when we do that because as the lost city now uh, required another attack and we don't know how that attack went as far as how much energy and time it took. We know that they were successful because Othniel gets Axa as his wife. And there again, we have one of those arranged marriages, right? But the, the belief on this is not that she was forced into it, but that actually she uh, went into this very openly. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any hint of regret or anything. And it may even be in mind uh, that Caleb had in mind uh, that Othniel would be the one that would lead the attack. And here again, we get one of those close family marriages, right? We've seen, seen it several times where, like in this case here, first cousins become married. Now, in our day and time, certainly not acceptable, uh, but it was the case as it was there. And so there may have been a lot of history between the two. Uh, they certainly would have known about each other, uh, probably had grown up around each other. And there may have been some deep affection between them already. And so as this plays out, we see that Caleb keeps his promise. And he, Othniel, being the one that conquered the city of Debir, uh, and that by that mean leading that he led the attack, uh, he receives Axa as his wife. And along with Axa, he also receives some property. And therein lies another situation, right? Because Axa looks around and goes, uh, okay, we got some land here, uh, but we got no water. And so she's asking her husband to go to her dad, his father-in-law, and ask for some land. We get zero, zero conversation as to what took place between Othniel and Axa. It goes from her asking him to go to it to her riding across on her donkey and going over to dad. And if she dismounts from the uh, donkey, he's already asked the question, what is it that you want? He could tell by her demeanor and that that she had come with a request. Was it the look of her eyes? Was it her disposition? We really don't know. But his reception to her was very kind and gracious. What is it that you want? And he asked her to share with him, right, what she wants. And he may have already fully known well, knowing the land that he had already given her. We don't know the, the background on that, but we certainly do know that she had come with a request. And he her father was willing to listen. What about you and me as we go to our heavenly father, right? And that idea of dismounting from the donkey that she had ridden was to be a, a point of submission. It's, it, it's similar to us kneeling as we're able to, and not everybody can kneel, you know, physically, but man, we can certainly kneel our hearts. We can certainly kneel our, our, our thoughts and get everything, you know, bowed and humbled before the Lord, even if we can't kneel at all physically. But she dismounted and she came to him and she came to him with a request. 
And she knew what that request was. She wanted water for the land. And what does Caleb do? He not only gives her uh, one set of springs, but another, upper and lower. And this may have a, an idea of the connection that we can make that the, the physical blessings that we have might be the lower uh, springs and the upper springs would be the spiritual blessings that God brings to us. But whatever it is, more than enough was given to uh, AXA in her request. And that's what I want to close out our time together with is an understanding that as we go before our Lord, he already knows our request, but he invites us to come to him, to share with him our thoughts and our concerns. And why would that be? He already knows what we need. He already knows what we want. But if he just pours it out upon us, pretty soon we start to expect it. Uh, there's a, Pretty soon it's not even an idea that even God's blessing us with it, but that he's giving us what we deserve, that we're, we're getting these great things because we're great and wonderful people. Uh, there's a Proverbs that uh, I had read a long time ago, but it was just uh, brought to my attention again here this past Sunday uh, by Pastor Baum as we were going through Sunday school. And he talks about the fact that uh, in, in the Proverbs, you know, that we, in Proverbs 30, uh, verses 7 through 9, uh, the things that we ask for is, first of all, that we not lie. The other thing is that God would give us all that we need, and in that giving to us, that he would give us just enough. Not too much where we forget about God, and not too little where we steal and, and curse God. You know, and that's the thing that God does for you and for me. He gives us what we need for this life. The problem with us is that we're not always satisfied with it, right? We're not always uh, content with what God would give us. There's another part that thinks that we need more. We, we deserve more. Uh, we might even say, I didn't deserve to have this happen in my life. And of course, the question is, why don't we deserve to have something negative happen in our life? You know, you and I are God's servants. We're his children. And he's blessing us and he's bringing us through our life, preparing us for eternity. And in that journey, he brings us into the lives of other people. And in that interaction, sometimes we have the pain and the conflict and the suffering that goes on because we're in a sinful, fallen world. And yet at the same time, God works through that to sharpen us, to equip us to help us learn the lessons of this life that we need to learn, which is certainly to trust him more and more each and every day. And it also is to impact the lives of other people around us, that they may know of what God has done for them, the great love of Jesus Christ. And of course, we run into people every day who have great hurt and pain, who are not Christian, and they struggle with the whys of why did this happen and all the other things. And you and I are in a position to share Jesus Christ with them, to tell them what Christ has done, the love that God has for them, and to encourage them on their journey through life. Well, I want to thank you for joining me today. And uh, again, I see Kryn Lane has joined us and uh, Doreen Fandry, if I haven't mentioned your name. And Karen, thank you. And Dee, again, thank you for being here today. And Fred, it was good to have you with us today. And Betty Ann, as always, thank you for joining too. Really appreciate your being here and the words of encouragement that you give uh, to here. Again, I would ask that you would hit that share button. I know we, we talk about it often. Uh, it's not a badge of honor at all. It's just really a way to share this message with those around us. Uh, as I said earlier in our prayer, we have technology that allows us to reach people around the world. Our next door neighbors, those in our community, those in our state, and as I said before, all the way around the world. So thank you so much. And Andrea, thank you for joining us today as well. It's good to have you joining us. And if you didn't get a chance to watch this in the beginning, I hope you go back and watch it. Uh, I think that God's word has some great uh, lessons for us to learn about the love God has for us in Jesus Christ. Blessings to you. Have a great and wonderful day. And I look forward to seeing you as the Lord blesses next Wednesday. And if not before, I'll see you in church too.